Hello. <coughs> so, um, welcome to the rear. <coughs> Excuse me. Hold on. I got a um, <coughs> little hitch in my throat there. Sorry. Uh, so, if you hear strange noises, it's me drinking tea. Um, so, due to technical problems on my part uh, and uh, a, a low battery, the uh, in class recording for today was uh, um, was lost, so I'm re-recording it um, at home for the distance folks and for whoever wasn't in class today or the people in class that want to want to review. Um, so we started out with some homework questions, <clears throat> and um, I'm not going to uh, repeat repeat them. Um, if anyone who's watching this for the first time has any questions on the homework, please just get in touch with me, and I'm more than happy to uh, to help out. So we we started out by talking about stress today. All right, we have sigma dot n equals t. And we were, I asked the class, you know, what's the, the physical meaning of this? And a couple people spoke up and someone made the, the observation that if we have a material point P, the stress tells us that if we make a cut through our body, through point P, on a plane that's specified by the normal vector, this tells us uh, what direction the traction vector or the force acting on point P on this plane. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm drinking some tea here, but I still have a little bit of a cough. Um, is. And so, really, it's a mapping from the normal vector to the force. And the whole idea behind the Cauchy stress principle is I don't need to know the force on every single plane. If I know the force on any three orthogonal planes, if I know the traction on this one, the traction on this plane, and the traction on this plane, any three orthogonal planes, it's enough to know the force acting on any other plane. Um, so we then looked at uh, an example where right, we had a coordinate system defined by x1, x2, x3. And we drew a plane, and this is uh, point one zero zero. This is point zero one zero. The intercepts. This is point zero zero two. So um, we then, as a class, reviewed how do we find the normal vector to this plane, and. What I did was I made a analogy with, let's think about Miller indices in a cubic crystal system. So let me uh, move this down here so we have a little bit more room. All right, so we have a plane that connects that's like this All right, we have another unit cell up here and so this is the plane and so uh, to find the Miller indices of the plane we simply take the reciprocal of the intercepts the x-axis the y oops not one over one half. It's one over one. 
1 over 1, 1 over 1, half, right? 1 over 2, because the intercept here is 0, 2. And then um, we need to make this integers, right? So that we multiply everything through by 2, and that becomes the 2, 2, 1 plane, right? And we want to normalize it. N is always a unit vector. So 2 squared plus 2 squared is 8, plus 1 squared gives us 9. The square root of 9 equals 3. So we need a 1 third out front. And that's our normal vector to this plane. So if we had a stress tensor, uh, that was of the form that was like this. We then said, well, how do you know it's actually a real, real stress tensor? Um, and we said, well, it's symmetric and it obeys the transformation laws. So we're going to call it a real stress tensor for now. So the traction vector right, is going to be sigma dot n, which was two thirds two thirds, one third. And if we uh, multiply that out, we end up with minus 14 minus 1477. And so then this brought us into a discussion on our stress is negative in the x direction. Right, so we have a, a stress component that's negative in x, negative in y, and positive in z. So what does this mean? What does a negative stress mean? And we said by convention that a positive stress is tensile and a negative stress is compressive and this stress state we have a um, traction vector that strongly texa, ten, textile a textile stress strongly tensile in the z direction but weakly compressive in the x and the y direction. So, um, that was basically it on uh, uh, tractions. We then um, did an example, we, we talked a, a bit about eigenvectors. And eigenvalues, All right? And we reviewed that if I have a transformation, right? This is my unit circle made up of all possible unit vectors. If I have a transformation, linear transformation, I'm going to go to. I can map this to an ellipse. And for this transformation in 2D, I'm going to have two directions, two vectors that don't change angle when I apply this transformation. So if I have a vector that's along the y-axis here, if I after the transformation, right, imagine if I shear this, this is going to be uh, rotated and stretched. 
by <clears throat> some angle theta. But my eigenvectors don't change direction. They're only scaled. So physically, this tells us, in terms of principal stresses, we're looking for this equation, we're, uh, solutions to this equation. The directions where I'm, my traction is aligned with my, is parallel to my normal direction. It's just a scaling of my normal direction. It can either be greater or less. Um, and then I, you know, went through minus lambda n equals zero. And um, we didn't really talk about, about that this system of linear equations only has a solution if this determinant equals zero. And we, we didn't talk a lot about the reasons uh, why, but just that observation. And then since this has to do with uh, determinants, I, we did, I did a little review of how do you take a determinant. Right, so for a two by two matrix, almost everyone remembered that it's uh, this times this minus this times this. So A D minus B C. So for a general three by three, we have to do something called a cofactor expansion. All right. And what the a cofactor expansion, sometimes called the Leibniz method, is we can write this determinant as a series of smaller determinants. And the way we do it is we pick any row and or any column. And I'm just going to pick the first column to start. And so we work down. So our first term is A. It's going to be A times some other determinant. And so what we do is we basically cross off the row that's A's in, cross off the column that's A's in, and we're left with this determinant, E, F, H, I. Right. So let me erase this. Right, and then we have to alternate sign, so now we're going down. So now we're going to have D times, again, the column and the row. So now this becomes B I H I. And now, since we're alternating signs, plus F this is a C, sorry. B C H I. Man, I'm trying to help you and I'm just gonna confuse you. Um this becomes B C E F. Alright. So we're for a N by n by n matrix, right, we can write it as a series of n, n minus 1 determinants. So for a 4 by 4 matrix, right, we write that as a sum of four uh, three by three determinants. Each of these three by three determinants we write as three two by two determinants. Uh, so the cofactor expansion is not a very efficient way of calculating the determinants of large matrices, but for three by three, uh, it's okay. 
So I gave this problem. So we have this stress tensor. 57024 0 right? And we want to find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this. So by inspection, you see how this 50 is all by itself, right? It's the only one in its row, the only one in its column. So we know that 50 is going to be an eigenvalue. And we know that its eigenvector is going to be 0, 1, 0. Right? Because it's in the, the only one in the two column in the two row. But how do we find the others? So we know that uh, the determinant of 57 minus lambda, 0, 24, 0, 50 minus lambda, 0, 24, 0, 43. We know that that determinant has to equal 0. So, here's the nice thing about when you have matrices with... Uh, where you can solve one of the eigenvectors by expansion or uh, by inspection like this means that our cofactor expansion only has one term. So we have zero times this determinant minus fifty minus lambda times the determinant fifty seven minus lambda twenty four twenty four 43 plus 0 times another determinant, right? So um, we can then expand this determinant out, right? So that's 57 minus lambda times 43 minus 24 squared. Um, And if you then multiply this all out, right, we get, we're, we're not going to multiply this through, but this becomes a, uh, shoot, sorry guys, 43 minus lambda, Duh. Um, so this becomes minus 50 minus lambda times 57 minus lambda, 43 minus lambda, minus 24 squared. Right, and so this here is a quadratic. If we multiply this through, we get a cubic, but we're trying to solve, so we want to factor. Um, so what we can solve this, we can factor, multiply this out and factor it, and we're left with uh, this, 50 minus lambda, lambda minus 25, and lambda minus 75 equals zero. All right, so that gives us the three eigenvalues of 75, 50, and 25. And we always want to, uh, we always order our eigenvectors from most positive to most negative, right? So if, just for a hypothetical, if this was minus 50, our eigenvectors would then be 75, 25, minus 50. It's just a convention that we always go from tensile to compressive. Um, so... Just a, just a convention thing. So now that we found our eigenvectors, we need to find our eigenvalues, right? So how do we do that, right? So let's start with lambda equals 75. Right? So we want to plug uh, 75 back into this... Uh, Um, 
equation, right? Sigma n minus lambda n equals zero. So we have uh, stress. Now we have 57 minus 75, 0, 24, 0, 50 minus 75, 0, 0, 0, 24, 43 minus 75 times n1, n2, n3 equals 0. And when we do this, we find, uh, we can multiply this all out, and we have uh, three um, equations. We have minus 18n1 plus 24n3 equals zero, minus 20, 25n two equals zero and twenty four n one minus thirty two n three n one minus thirty two n three equals zero. Alright so we know n two has to be zero and for n one we get plus or minus four fifths n three is minus plus four Three fifths. Let me write this neater. All right. So our eigenvector. So the minus plus means it doesn't matter whether we pick this to be positive or negative. We just need to pick the other one as uh, negative. All right. If we pick a plus here. We need a minus here. If we pick a minus here, we need a plus here. Um, so our eigenvector is 4 fifths, 0 minus 3 fifths. Right. And then we would then uh, um, uh, normalize this. Right. We already did. 16 and 12 is 25. Yeah. Okay. So I already normalized it. So we want to make sure that our eigenvectors are um, unit vectors. So we did the same thing for lambda equals 50 and for lambda equals 50. Where's my notes? We have. Um, of course, n2 equals 1, n1, n3 equals 0, and lambda equals 25. <coughs> we have um, uh, where is it? n1 equals plus or minus 3 fifths n3 equals minus plus four fifths. All right. So the the whole reason we went about you know, so we found the eigenvectors and an important thing which I don't know if I mentioned in the notes or the lecture, but a matrix of the um, right of the eigenvectors is actually the transformation from the stress in the current in the current frame to the principal frame. So if I have sigma principal is equal to a sigma a transpose, right? And our principal frame 75 0 0 0 50, 0, 0, 0, 25. That's what our principal stress looks like. Our transformation matrix A is nothing but a um, uh, 
our eigenvectors are the columns this sigma. All right, and our original stress tensor was this one, 57, 24, 0, 50, 0, 24, 0, 43. All right, and then 45, 4, 4 fifths, 0, minus 3 fifths, 0, 1, 0. And then three fifths zero minus four fifths. Right? So the a matrix of our eigenvectors is the transformation from our current stress to the principal uh, stress frame. And that was uh, what we covered uh, this time today. I'm sorry that the uh, in class recording got all kinds of bunged up, but uh, if it happens again in the future, I'll make a um, make sure to make another recording like this so that we have a record of both the in-class stuff and the notes. And uh, for those of you who weren't in class or the distance students still can um, aren't missing out on any material that we may have uh, that we may have discussed. If um, someone watches this and realizes that we missed something. Uh, here that we actually did discuss in class, let me know so I can uh, put it together for uh, a, a little bit of a addendum. Okay, thanks guys.